All right, so I want to discuss next uh, one of the uh, most important optimization procedures uh, that we have developed uh, in the engineering and physical sciences and just broadly applicable, with, applicable which is gradient descent. And this is a way to handle uh, basically nonlinear systems of equations and to figure out how to optimize over nonlinear spaces uh, for parameter dependencies. So it's related to regression because a lot of our models we're going to pick are going to be nonlinear fits. And so you'll see how this works out momentarily. Uh, again, this is from this book by Brunton and Kutz, databookuw.com. You'll find all the code, both Python and MATLAB, uh, as well as extensive notes and lots of other videos there. So let's start off. Uh, the previous lecture, I started framing the problem like this. Start talking about basic curve fitting, which is, I give you a set of data, here it is, and data points. And I speci mo specify a model to fit this data with. So for the idea, just generically for regression, is there's some output y, and then I specify some input that should be an x, f of x, beta. So the idea is, I give you some input, I get, give you a model, go find the beta values that map me to that output. So it's going to be an optimization problem. What we did in the last lecture was to say, let's make a linear model, for instance, and do least square regressions. So this is fine in general. A lot of times what we do is line fits or curve fits, parabola fits, whatever we want to do. But now we're going to broaden this concept up to other kinds of models we might use. So generically, we're now going to say there is a nonlinear model here. So taking, uh, minimizing this with respect to beta is much more difficult. So you don't have closed analytic expressions. In particular, I want to start thinking about how you would minimize this. And in some sense, you'd minimize this in the same way as you've done before, which is if I took some error metric, which is the distance between my model and my actual data. But now what I would do is say, I need to, and I'd take the sum of that error, if I, want to take, if I want to minimize that, I have to take the derivative of it. And here's the derivative of it. So if I took the difference squared and the sum, take the derivative of it, you get something like this, which is f minus y of k, and then df d beta. In other words, you have to compute the derivative of this function f with respect to the parameter beta. If it's a linear model, this is very simple to do. But you often don't have f being some kind of linear model. And it can be much more, it can be a nonlinear model. In that case, you have to compute these things. Okay? So that's what we're going to do here with gradient descent. In fact, F typically and, and beta are some high dimensional surface. And so the question is, how do you actually then optimize this? And the way we do this is with gradient descent. So gradient descent is all about trying to figure out how to walk downhill. So I have some landscape of beta values, and, the, and I'm looking at, again at the error landscape, and what I want to do is walk to the minima. So one of the ways you can start determining which way is downhill, in other words, how do I go down into that minima, is by computing the gradient. And there it is there. And this is the gradient with respect to those beta parameters. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to basically update the beta values and figure out downhill and beta space. So right now I'm using x as a representation of being in that space. OK. So for instance, let me give you a couple pictures here. Here's a couple landscapes. You know, in this one here, there's one minima. So no matter where you start, no matter how you compute downhill, you'll just eventually end up right at this global minima down here. OK? So if you're in that global minima, that's what you'd like to be. But there's nothing to stop you from falling all the way downhill into that global minima. The picture on the right is a little different. There's two little valleys in here. And depending upon where you start, you either get stuck in this global minima, or behind it, there's a local minima. And this is the canonical thing that can happen when you do nonlinear optimization of these functional spaces because there's lots of local minima everywhere. And in the simple example, there's two of them. And if you end up in one of them, that's the local minima, not the global minima, how do you get out of it so you can get to the global minima? Okay, those are open questions in many application areas is 
getting stuck in local minima is, in fact, uh, something that happens routinely and is always a challenge for the optimization. OK, so let's start talking about how to do gradient descent. So gradient descent works the following way. You take some data. This is my nonlinear surface, let's say. And now I'm going to build a model for that where I'm going to discover, figure out how to map my inputs to my outputs, my x to y's, okay, and discover some betas given a model, some nonlinear model now, that, do, do, that does this. So the way to do this is through iteration. So what the gradient descent is going to do is locally, you're going to see which way is downhill, take a step down the hill. Compute the gradient again. Find which way is downhill, take a step. Okay. In other words, find the fastest way downhill. That's, that's the idea. From the gradient information, you can find the fastest direction downhill, take a step in that direction. And that's what this represents here. My new solution is what it was before, minus delta times the gradient. <coughs> so this is telling me how to walk downhill. And by the way, how far downhill I walk is given by the parameter delta, which is something I still have to discover. So I'm going to start walking downhill. And remember, the x's here are really sort of generic structures, which are here, in this case, are going to be the parameter values beta. Okay. So in other words, I live in a high dimensional parametric space. I want to walk, I want to find how to walk downhill in beta. And I've represented these by x because normally we think of these as spatial directions. Okay. So we're going to walk downhill. Each step we take is a step delta in that direction. There is a way to find an optimal value of delta, but that means computing a derivative, which is typically expensive. So a lot of times people will just pick a delta, which is often called in machine learning a learning rate. In other words, how much in that direction should I step? And that learning rate is often just chosen ahead of time. But there is a principled way to do it, to find the optimal step. But it's done by here, which is here's the iteration. But if I call this f here, f of delta, to be the, the, the next step, then I can find the df dl. In other words, again, compute a derivative, set it to 0. df d delta, which is here, set that to 0. I then have a set of equations I can solve for, for delta. And of course, this is computationally expensive, so I may not want to do it. I just may want to just outright pick a delta value, take a step, and not worry about doing an extra computation, which could be pretty expensive, because this is typically a high dimensional problem. So in, generically, what people do is they do pick that learning rate delta, and they don't solve it with this. This is just to show you, though, you could do it. So let's go through some code. And what I'm going to do in this code is I'm going to walk through some examples, show you how gradient descent works. Okay? So here's the code. And what we're going to do with this code, I'm going to define a surface. So here is defining the surface. I'm going to take uh, my x and y values. It's a two-dimensional surface. It goes from negative 6 to 6 with a step size of 0.5. So I'm going to define the surface. Here it is. There's a mesh grid command, and my surface is given by here. Okay? And initially, what I'm going to start with is just simply a bowl structure. So it's completely convex. So when you fall downhill, you're going to just simply end up at the bottom of that bowl. Okay? Now, once I define this surface, that's the first surface. I also define a second surface here. So I'm going to do two surfaces because I already showed you these two pictures. One is just a bowl. The other one is this second surface, which is made up of two Gaussians. So there's a local minima and a global minima stuck near each other with a saddle in between them. Okay. Now what, you're do what I'm doing here is once I've defined these, I can use the gradient command here to produce the gradient. That's one of the key up. That's what we're using to update that step. Remember, I take where I am. My next value of the solution is where I am plus a little bit of something. And that little bit of something is depends upon this gradient computation right here. So I compute the gradient, and I can start walking downhill. OK? So then, once I have that, I can just iterate and follow this downhill. So let, let me just show you what these surfaces look like. I'm going to run this. And first of all, I'm going to show you 
what the surfaces look like and what their gradients look like. All right, so here are the two surfaces oops, that we're going to do. So the two surfaces are here. One of the surfaces is this here, which I already showed you. So all this is is a convex bowl. The other surface is over here, which has two minima, one a global, one a local minima. So you have these two minima, and this is what you're going to be trying to use your gradient search to get down this hill. Oh, by the way, let me just rerun this because it, it produced a, there we go. I wanted to show you this again. And here are their gradients. So the gradients are for the two different examples I've given you on the left and on the right. So the, these two here are the gradient in the x and the y direction for the simple one, the gradient in x and y direction for the one with two minima. Okay, so that's what we have as a structure that we're going to go do gradient descent for. So the nice thing here is I can compute entirely my gradient. Oftentimes you have to compute the gradient by actually just doing a derivative computation locally. Okay, but here, since I knew what the function was, I could use the gradient command to create the gradient over the whole surface. So now let's go ahead and run our code. So what we're going to do here is here is the gradient descent code. That's the whole thing. What I start off with is an initial guess. Remember, gradient descent is an iteration procedure. You give me a guess, it keeps updating itself as I walk downhill. So my guess initially is 3, 2. Here's my function, f of 1. This is the, just the simple bowl structure. And what I'm going to do here is I can compute the gradient. And by the way, in this case, it's so simple, I can also compute the optimal step size delta. Okay, so I've done that here. You can just work out what the computation gives you. This is the optimal step size delta. And so to update the solution, my x value is what it was before, plus 2 delta, which is given by here, x. Okay, my y value is updated here, so I have my new solution. And I keep iterating until I get to my error to be small enough. In other words, when I've reached the bottom of this thing, stop. Okay, so I'm going to show you what this looks like. Very simple computation. And here's what it is. And in fact, what I like about this picture, it shows you the whole process of this thing walking downhill. So here's the surface in gray. Underneath it, you see the, like a topographical picture. And then I started off here. It took one step, I ended up there. Took another step, ended up here. And you can just track its progress all the way down to the minima. So it got there very quickly trying to walk downhill. Each one of these steps found the optimal or the direction, the fastest descent, and it stepped in that direction an optimal amount that we can compute it from that delta computation. Okay, and this is what you get in that scenario. Okay, we can also compute this instead of using our computation that we did here. So here was the gradient that we can compute this with. We're going to walk this downhill by using interpolations for computing the values as I go through. Because here now what we're going to do is generically take a step forward into the future, which is given by some delta. Okay. And there it is here. So I'm going to take a delta search, F min search, delta search. I'm going to actually optimize for the right step size. So instead of actually doing that derivative by hand, I'm going to use f min search to solve that optimization problem, then update my solution as I walk downhill. Remember, the solution in the future is what it is now, minus delta del df. So that's my gradient. So go in the gradient direction of a certain amount delta, where I've optimized to find what that gradient search direction is. So it's almost the same as before, except for now instead of me manually putting in the computation for the optimal delta, this is actually finding it for us. I could also just simply specify some value, like take a step of 0.1, okay? Which is more typically done. So let's run this, and here's what we get. Run this. I'm going to show you this on the more complex, ex complex example. 
And here's what you get. These are the things that you get. Here's your surface. And if I start at an initial condition here in blue, notice what happens? I fall down here right into this value into the here. In fact, um, if I start over there in red, I, I fall into the red ball. In fact, I've shown you several trajectories here. So there's a blue, magenta, and a red. And notice that if I fall, if I, if I start over here in some initial conditions that are close to this uh, local minima, I fall into that local minima, whereas these two fall into this global minima. Okay, so it's always just walking downhill, and you can see the iteration path it took to get down there. So this is just a standard application of gradient descent. Compute the gradient, update where you are according to the gradient with some learning rate. And this learning rate, at least what we did, we found through minimization. The final thing I want to show you is that we could also do, instead of doing what we've done here, which is to compute in both x and y the best direction to walk downhill, you could do what's called alternating descent. What you do is said, hold x fixed, find the best value of y to go downhill, walk down in y. Hold y fixed, now optimize in x. So at any one time, you're fixing all the variables except one, then it's very easy to find the minima. You can even just do a line search. Plot the value of that function according to one variable, find the minima, and go there. Now, do it in the other direction and so forth. This is called alternating descent. Alternating optimization methods are common and used widely across uh, engineering, physical, biological sciences, partly because it's easy. Like, right, you, you only have to over optimize over one variable at a time. And so typically, that's not so hard to do. And the hope is that as you do that, you reach the global minima over after a certain number of iterations. So let me show you what this gives here, because in fact, in this case, it does an amazing job in actually finding the minima. So here is using the alternating descent method. Again, in this case, notice the pathway to the minima is always by holding one value fixed. So for instance, in this case here, I only am allowed to move in the y direction because I'm holding x fixed. So I start here, I move this direction to the minima. Now I hold y fixed and only move an x. There we go. So you can see this here in the structure of the three-dimensional structure, all these things falling in here, falling in here. So alternating descent is really quite a advantageous strategy in terms of optimization because it allows you this flexibility of a very simple procedure at each step. Now, if it's very high dimensional, so if I have lots of parameters to optimize over, it becomes a little tricky because I have to hold, you know, if I have p parameters, I have to hold p minus one of them constant and move in one direction, and then I have to walk through all p of them. Gradient descent just computes the entire downhill for the whole high dimensional system, whereas this does it one at a time. So anyway, it's something to consider when you're doing optimization strategies. All right, so that's gonna allow us to, so again, this is just some pictures of this surface, watching the optimization pathways under this gradient descent. And then here again is the gradient descent that you would normally have following into these local minima. And again, here what I did is I used the fmin search command to find the optimal delta but you can just pick it to be a constant value. It'll look very similar to what you're doing here. And also the alternating descent algorithm, which allows you to do the optimization one parameter at a time, which tends to be much easier, but may not scale to very high dimensional systems easily. So that's what I want to say about gradient descent. Now, it is difficult to underestimate the impact of gradient descent on modern day optimization. Gradient descent methods or gradient descent based methods are sort of the workhorse of most data science, almost all deep learning and AI architectures. So it's an incredibly important tool for optimization, partly because 
It's just been so successful across so many fields. So just understand that I wanted to highlight it for you. And in chapter six, we'll talk about a variant of this for very high dimensional systems called stochastic gradient descent, which is an important uh, modification of the algorithm that is very useful, especially for deep neural nets. But for now, I'll leave it here. And remember, this is allowing you to do regression. That's what we wanted to do. I have a nonlinear model. How do I find the parameters of my nonlinear model in that regression? Use something like gradient descent to walk downhill to do the optimization. Again, everything can be found here on the website, databookuw.com. And here you can find the notes as well, databookuw.com, databook.pdf. You can find all the code in MATLAB and in Python for your use to play around with some of these optimization procedures.